Hey guys, Dr. Mike Varshavsky here. Welcome to another episode of The Wednesday Checkup. In the past, I've made a COVID-19 fact-checking video on politicians, media, even conspiracy theorists. But today I wanna to focus on President Trump. And the reason I'm doing this is not because of a political motivation, but simply because he's the leader of the United States. He's in charge of making a lot of the decisions that affect you and I in our day-to-day -day lives. Funding, testing, decisions about potential treatments and vaccinations. And I think it's important to be critical of our leader so that we can hold them accountable to the statements and decisions they make. I've been following the media reports very closely surrounding COVID-19, and there's been heavy reporting both in the United States and outside talking about how America has failed in the COVID-19 pandemic. And while there's certainly truth to that, we need to be fair. No one can be truly prepared for a pandemic. We need to put that out there. Also, hindsight is 2020, and everyone loves to play Monday morning quarterback. That being said, President Trump has made several inaccurate statements that I'm gonna cover here today. As a leader, you wanna project confidence, you wanna project being alert, not anxious. However, that doesn't mean we should downplay truly serious issues. And throughout this pandemic, the messaging from President Trump has been this. I think that's a problem that's gonna go away. It's going to disappear. It'll go away. It will go away. It's gonna go away. You know it is going away. It is going away. This is gonna go away. It's gonna go. It's gonna leave. COVID-19 is gonna go away. It won't be a problem for the rest of our lives. But to continually say this in the midst of a pandemic, when hundreds of thousands of lives are being lost, millions of people are getting infected, it's, it's just, it's not an accurate representation of what's going on. You're talking points have to change when you get new numbers in. When I tell you at home to not look at numbers every day, that's because I don't want you becoming anxious over each of these numbers going up. But as the president of the United States, a person who's in charge of making really important day-to-day -day decisions, you have to be looking at these numbers and seeing that this problem isn't going away. In fact, I think where President Trump showed the least amount of accuracy in his speaking was on the day that I published my video two weeks ago. COVID cases are spiking, people are dying, and the second wave isn't even here yet. And here's what President Trump said that same day. It's dying out. It's fading away. It's going to fade away. Fast forward now to two weeks later, the problem hasn't gone away. It's actually gotten so bad that the peak of COVID-19 is higher than it was in April. We have to take this virus seriously because if we don't, you know what happens? It starts spiking again, exactly as it is happening right now. I've consistently preached that we need personal responsibility, a serious level of personal responsibility in order to stop or at least slow down this virus, meaning that we need to socially distance ourselves, we need to wear masks, wash our hands. That being said, there is still something that our government needs to do, and that's testing. That's their responsibility. We need to have testing supplies available, and we need to make it at a price that's affordable to everybody. In fact, it probably should be covered by our government, like it is in many other countries. President Trump is going on stage and saying things like this. We've tested now 25 million people. Here's the bad part. When you test, a, when you do testing to that extent, you're gonna find more people, you're gonna find more cases. So I said to my people, slow the testing down, please. I can't imagine anyone at the CDC or any respectable medical agency hearing a president saying we should slow down testing and taking him seriously. Here's what his staff has said. It was a comment that he made in jest. It's a comment that he made in passing. You know, it was tongue in cheek. Did the Come president? On, no. Come on now, that was tongue in cheek. I understand that there's not much of a sense of humor at CNN Center, but the president was joking. So let's say he's joking. Why? You're the leader of our nation. We're looking to you for information. A lot of people trust you. And then after his staff says it was a joke, President Trump says this. At that rally when you said you asked your people to slow down testing, were you just kidding or do you have a plan to slow down testing? I don't kid. Let me just tell you, let me make it clear. So he's not kidding. On top of it, when President Trump says the numbers are going up because we're testing more, that is a fallacy. We are catching more cases, but at the same time, we're having more and more sick people and virus transmission. That is showed by increased hospitalization rate and an increased positivity rate on the people who we are testing. And in fact, President Trump leads us to believe that we have the biggest testing capacity in the world. We're eighth in per capita testing in the world. Not number one, not number two, eight. So we could do a better job. And we certainly shouldn't start slowing things down now when the virus is at its highest peak it's been. Let's chat mortality rates. Just last week, President Trump tweeted, coronavirus deaths are way down. 
mortality rate is one of the lowest in the world. We aren't the lowest in the world. We're somewhere in the mid thirties. So we're not the best in the world by any means. I'm not even a huge fan of comparing all of these numbers. There's many countries in the world that don't do a great job in keeping exact deaths, rates, certificates of death. There's all sorts of biases that come into play. But that being said, we're not number one anyway. Coronavirus deaths, are they way down? Well, they're down and we kind of expect them to come up. The reason I'm saying this is because we see the cases going up, but the deaths aren't going up. So President Trump is taking this as a positive sign, but I approach that with a little bit of skepticism. Usually there's a lag time between COVID-19 initial infection and then death, because it takes time to succumb to the virus, and then it takes time to report that death. Second, we're seeing a lot of young folks get infected with this virus, and generally speaking, they have a lower mortality rate than the people who are over the age of 50 or 60. And then the final point is, we have some treatments out there. Remdesivir, dexamethasone, both treatments that are being used in the severely ill, hoping to prevent or lower the chance of death. We also learn how to manage ventilators better. In the beginning of this pandemic, this was a novel virus. We were learning, we were trying different settings. As we've established better parameters, we've done better taking care of patients with COVID-19. I hope that President Trump is right and that the deaths do continue trending downward. But based on the information we have at hand, I don't think we can make that prediction just yet. Coronavirus? right? Kung flu? Yeah. What's the purpose of calling it Kung flu? You're not a stand-up comedian. I'm one to laugh at ourselves, at our problems, at our pain. I believe it's therapeutic, but not right now. Not when the country is polarized and we need to bring people together. Like this isn't effective in anything except rallying his base. COVID, COVID-19, COVID. I say, what's the 19, COVID-19? Some people can't explain what the 19, give me the COVID-19. I said, that's an odd name. There's nothing odd about COVID-19. 19 stands for the year that it was found, 2019. It's almost as if President Trump wants to demean this virus so much that it's not as powerful taking the power away from his campaign. But I get a lot of Tremendously positive news on the hydroxy. I've talked about hydroxychloroquine many times on this channel and on television. It really bothered me when President Trump called it a game changer without having any real good evidence to back that up. And because of that, patients took it unnecessarily, potentially had negative effects as a result, and really saw limited benefit. You know the expression I've used, John? What do you have to lose? Okay, what do you have to lose? Your life. Medications even ones that have a known safety profile have side effects. I've had many patients contact me from home when they were quite sick and said they didn't wanna to go to the hospital, they just wanted me to prescribe hydroxychloroquine because they saw President Trump make statements like this. And it took a lot of counseling to explain what they could lose. They can get an arrhythmia. They can lose their lives as a result of this arrhythmia because they're taking this medication without getting an EKG first. There's a lot of reasons why doctors don't prescribe medications willy-nilly and one of them is side effects. That's probably the most important one of them all. Let's talk second wave. It's at the tip of everyone's tongue. We're all worried about it. What's the deal with the second wave? Here's what our politicians think. There is no second wave coming. It's just, you know, hot spots. They send in CDC teams. We've got the testing procedure. We've got the diagnostics, we've got the PPE, and so I really think it's a pretty good uh, situation. Only Larry Kudlow can go on television and say it's a pretty good situation when we're hitting the biggest peak we've had with COVID-19 cases. Like, it just doesn't make sense to me. Like, you're lying to yourself. And in fact, it's not the first time Larry Kudlow has went on TV and said something quite inaccurate. We have contained this. I won't say airtight, but pretty close to airtight. No, Larry Kudlow, it's July, and we still have not contained this. We're still experiencing all-time highs, despite the European Union having a very low number of cases. So we're clearly doing something wrong, and we have to be forthcoming and honest about it. But Larry Kudlow did say one thing accurately. There is no second wave. But that's only because we haven't even left the first wave. The cases of COVID-19 spiked in the United States. We were happy they didn't spike that high. We did all the social distancing, and then we relaxed everything, and what do you know? 
it just continues going right back up. How has Larry Kudlow and President Trump not changed their talking points when the numbers are clearly going up? We shouldn't be using COVID-19 as a chess piece in a political game. We need to be looking at these numbers honestly. We need to be giving accurate information to the public so they can make the best decisions and actions for themselves and their families. Until we can put our political nonsense aside, we will not get anywhere because the general public is confused. I watch media, I'm confused. I have to read dense research in order to figure out what's going on. The average person cannot do that. Therefore, they're led astray. We need a non-biased approach to COVID-19. Let's stop playing the blame game and just give the accurate information of what's going on, an accurate, non-political snapshot, as well as some guidelines that aren't political as well. Covering your face in public to protect a community is not a political statement. You do not need to put on a Make America Great Again hat and put the mask over your eyes to show how cool you are. And at the same time, if you see someone not wearing a mask, yelling at them won't help the situation either. Explaining to them why the mask is important could be a step, but yelling at them is only gonna make the problem worse and the polarization continue to trend upwards. We need to do this smartly, non-politically, and in a scientific way. All in all, I have this final message for President Trump. You are the leader of the United States, the country that I call home, that my family escaped to from Russia. You have a responsibility to people to be honest, to be forthcoming with information that we can use to protect ourselves and our family members. Please avoid sarcastic, jokey, or even mean rhetoric when talking about COVID-19. It creates confusion, and confusion in the midst of a pandemic costs people their lives. I'm a frontline healthcare worker. The last thing I wanna see is my patients get sick or even my colleagues get sick. You have the ability to bring this nation together, but you have to do that by starting to be honest, forthcoming, and unifying in your message.